Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's special program of the Commonwealth Club of California, featuring His Royal Highness Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex, discussing Generation Z and his very close involvement with the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, United States. I'm Rob Acker, CEO of Salesforce.org and your chair for the program. And Salesforce is incredibly proud to be supporting the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award here in the United States. And it's an organization that I'm personally a huge admirer of. The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award engages with more than 1.1 million young people aged 14 to 24 globally, helping them find their purpose, passion, and place in the world. The award brings together young people from diverse backgrounds, whether social, economic, or geographic. It connects us in a divided world, building lifelong collaboration skills, vital to bridging differences, differences that have have to be overcome to build a better world. It's programs such as the award that will help us heal the challenges of this world, and there are many. Founded in 1956 by its namesake, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, the award methodology has stood the test of time. Youth undertaking the award put a holistic emphasis on community service, skill building, and physical activity. Boasting millions of alumni from more than 130 countries and territories and more than 8,000 alumni here in the United States, the award is the largest global youth achievement program. The International Award is, is a proven youth development program that complements formal classroom learning and focuses on challenging real-world experiences that build character, resilience, and self-confidence. And it's those attributes that are so vital for young people today. Our youth face continuous challenges, including here in the United States, such as racial, social injustice, education, and skills gaps, increasing unemployment, increased mental health challenges, climate, COVID, the list goes on. But what inspires me is that young people have an idealism. They have a passion for wanting to make a difference and wanting to make the world a better place for all. And they're acting on that passion. We as adults have a responsibility to nurture this and propose new, innovative ways, not only finding solutions and to listen to them, not merely lecture them. I fervently believe that if we enable them and their achievements, and we need those achievements, we need their innovation, we need their talent. Due to COVID-19, 13% of the U.S. students have delayed graduation. 40% have lost a job, an internship, or an offer. Lower-income students are 55% more likely to have delayed graduation due to COVID-19 than their higher-income peers. So it's vital that we have a talented and diverse workforce to fill the jobs of the future, not just for companies such as mine at Salesforce, where it's estimated that the Salesforce economy will add 3.3 million new jobs alone, but also globally. The World Economic Forum predicts that the digital revolution will transform the future of work and the workplace, and as many as 133 million new jobs will be created. In addition, our youth and their input, passion, activism are critical as we commit to, to achieve the sustainable development goals, as we accelerate progress towards a fairer world by 2030, where extreme poverty have been errat eradicated. Climate change is properly addressed. Injustice and inequality are no longer acceptable. And we must remember that the next blueprints for our future will be set by youth of, of today. So being able to empower those who feel less empowered, being able to empower future leaders and enable young people to follow their impassions to improve the state of the world, of the world. I see the award doing this for young people all over the world. And this is why I am very proud to be here before you. Today, His Royal Highness, Chair of the Global Movement, will engage in a conversation on Gen Z with re recent Princeton valedictorian and award holder Nicholas Johnson. And through this lens of what is occurring globally, as well as through the lens of the United States, the two will discuss the current challenges facing Gen Z and their collective response. To welcome each honored guest, it's my pleasure to turn the program over to our moderator, Nichelle Carr, producer at WC1 Studios. Chief Content Officer at Odd Pop and Board Chair of the Duke of Edinburgh's Award International here in the United States. Please welcome Ms. Carr. Hello, everyone. 
Today, His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex, who serves as the global chair to the board of trustees, overseeing the Duke of Edinburgh's international award worldwide, leading the world's largest youth achievement program for over 15 years, as his father, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, entrusted his namesake patronage to Edward, his youngest son. A bronze, silver, and gold award holder, HRH has been a tireless advocate for young people abroad in the UK and significantly here in the USA, visiting often to promote the growth of the award in the United States. Nicholas Johnson, hailing from Montreal, Canada, is pursuing PhD studies in operations research at MIT. He holds a Bachelor of Engineering Science degree in operations research and financial engineering with minors in computer science, statistics, and machine learning, and applied and computational mathematics from Princeton University. He is the valedictorian of Princeton's class of 2020 and the first black valedictorian in the university's history. He is also an award holder with the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, having earned his bronze and silver while currently working on his gold award. I'll now turn things over to Mr. Johnson and His Royal Highness. During their conversation, we encourage you to submit questions via the chat room next to your screen. I'll return later for the question period when we will answer as many questions as possible. Thank you and see you soon. His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward Earl of Wessex, award USA leadership and supporters, distinguished guests, the Duke of Edinburgh International Award participants and all attendees, it is my immense pleasure to welcome you all to this Generation Z Trailblazers conversation. My goal for this event is twofold. First, I hope that this discussion helps elucidate the capacity in which the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Program develops skills that position members of our generation to thrive in society as responsible and productive citizens. Earlier this year, I completed my undergraduate studies at Princeton University, where I was named valedictorian of the class of 2020, making me the first black valedictorian in Princeton's 274 year history. Ever since the initial announcement, I have received countless inquiries broadly related to how I was able to thrive while at Princeton. When I reflect on my upbringing and my journey thus far, there's no question that the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award played a very significant role in shaping who I am today. Most notably, the program, which I began at the start of high school, helped cultivate a commitment and ability to engage in the communities that I am a part of, a recognition of the immense value of experiential learning, and a belief in my ability to use my unique skill set to affect change. As a Silver Award recipient who is currently working towards the Gold Award, I hope to share and reflect on some of my experiences in the program in keeping with the first goal I mentioned. My second hope for the conversation is to explore how the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award positions members of our generation to tackle the major challenges we currently face in our world. Recent months have been incredibly trying for each of us for our families, our loved ones, our communities, and for the world. COVID-19 has taken far too many lives, disrupted daily life around the world, and forced us to reevaluate our structures and functions within society. My heart truly aches for all those who have lost loved ones to this pandemic. The events of recent weeks have illustrated how the legacy of systemic racism in the United States continues to disadvantage, endanger, and take away the lives of Black people, compromising a fundamental human right. Every person has a responsibility to stand against racism and to uphold basic human decency. At the same time, climate change continues to adversely impact human lives around the world and threaten the health of our planet, our home. Such immense challenges require innovative, cross-disciplinary solutions, and I believe that the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award fosters competencies that can, help develop, that can help the development of such solutions. I hope you all enjoy this event. And with that, I'll dive right into our first question for this conversation. The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award was originally founded more than 60 years ago, 
Today's world is notably different from the world in which this program was originally conceived. Sir, why do you think it is important for today's young people, particularly members of Generation Z, to participate in the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award? Well, thank you, Nicholas. Yes, well, that's a good opening question, isn't it, really? <laughs> and uh, and you, you, set, you set the bar for this conversation really very high, but I'll, I'll do my best to, uh, to try and answer it. I, I, think, I think there are probably two parts to, to, to this. Um, why, is, why is the award important now? And, and also, why is it relevant? And that, I think, is, is quite important. I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with the relevance for part first, if I may. Um, and I'm going to use a quote from um, the founder, my father, Duke Venbra, who, who, who wrote, young people growing up in this modern and complicated world have many difficulties to face and opportunities for personal achievements are often limited. Now, you might be forgiven for thinking he wrote that yesterday. Um, in fact, he wrote that back in the, in the 1950s when the award first started, which is perhaps a little depressing. Um, and one of his, uh, well, I mean, one of the, in a sense, the co-inspirers of the Duke Veterans Award um, was a, an educationalist called Kurt Hahn. And, um, and he identified back in the, in, back in, I think it was probably back in the, in the, the, the 50s as well, post-war, that, that there were what he identified as six declines. So there was the decline in fitness, uh, initiative and enterprise, uh, memory and imagination, skill and care, self-discipline and compassion. He felt all those things were things in society which we really needed, and and uh, um, and he went on to explain what what he thought those role were. But it's just interesting that, curiously, we're struggling with exactly the same issues today. We're struggling with with um, you know still trying to to um, overcome you know the the. the the weakness in the loss of tradition of craftsmanship, for instance, um, and uh, and and you, 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 what you've been talking about in your introduction there, you know, the, the issue of, of compassion. So, I think that 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 in some cases um, the context is is perhaps uh, today is maybe then the challenges are depressingly similar, but we have come a long way. That's that's the positive, and the award has is not the same, exactly the same as it was then. Um, and that's because the framework that you get involved with as a young person means that you take the decision of what it is that you do. So the award has been constantly adapting and changing. It is very much about what this current generation of young people are interested in, want to do, and the award reflects that. So that, that's the relevance bit, I think. Um, and we, you know, I think that's quite important. Now, but why is the award important? Now, well, that, that's that's the now that, that's a. A, a really much more difficult question. Um, but my father was really keen that the award should inspire young people to challenge themselves. Um, he really believed that to discover the, the sense of and the satisfaction of achievement um, and to find an added purpose and pleasure in their lives and a, and a passion in their lives was, was really key. And it wasn't just about inspiring young people. He also wanted to inspire adults. Um, to, to gain that that sense of, of, of satisfaction for which comes from helping others to discover the hidden abilities and to overcome a challenge. Um, and y y your award holder, you, you, you've, you've experienced that, not just that sense of achievement, um, but also I think you've probably, you know, the, the adults that have helped you through the award and guided you, you know, I mean, they hopefully have shared in that, that pride in watching you achieve what, what you've done. You know, I mean, that's really important. And But the award is a, is a do-it-yourself growing up kit. It's, it's not owned by the, us. It's owned by you, the participant. You, you, you're the one that determines what it is that you do. Um, and and that, that sense of empowerment, that sense that, look, you know, you take control of this. You, you, you build your own confidence and, and your own leadership skills because that's, that's what it does. And, and that, that, I think is, that, I think, is what's so important. And, and by doing it, you discover there's much more in you than you think. That's the, that's the infinite potential of, of every young person out there. If you can just unlock that potential, it's fantastic. And you can't do that in a classroom. You can't do that sitting in front of a computer. You have to get mm -hmm. outside. And, and that's, that's what non-formal education and out-of-classroom learning is, is about. It's that experiential learning. And, and that's what's so critical. 
um, and it's essential to all life skills that that you will develop and you will use throughout your life wherever you go. It's a now I, I hasten now. That's the longest answer you'll get. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a big question that you started. Uh, it was, with. It was <laughs> certainly a very important question, one that warrants uh, a very elaborate response. And a lot of the ideas you shared uh, really resonate with uh, with my experience. I can. I genuinely say that the award truly pushed me to uh, pursue activities and ultimately achieve things that I hadn't previously imagined engaging in. And I really uh, benefited a lot from that self, from that sense of fulfillment. And uh, I know that the many mentors who shared that journey with me were also uh, extremely excited to, to, to see that. And with respect to some of the, um, some of the um, reasons of the re- reasons regarding the relevance of the award, um, a lot of the declines that you shared do certainly resonate with a lot of the challenges that I face and that other members of my generation still face. Um, the quotation you shared has truly um, aged timelessly. Um, and indeed, there's, there's no question, in, in my opinion, that some of the most significant, uh, impactful, and long-lasting learning that a person can do during their youth will not occur in the traditional academic setting. Um, you know, most notably, a commitment to engaging and giving back to communities that you are a part of, that you are a part of, uh, an ability to operate in foreign environments or environments that might be different from those in which you were raised, and that ability does not necessarily imply a comfort. Um, but I think those skills are very indispensable throughout life. Um, you 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 really um, touched on on a, on a very important point. Although the world has changed tremendously over the past uh, sixty years, there's no doubt that today's reality differs fundamentally from the world uh, in which the program was originally conceived. And the value and importance of the competencies that we've touched on certainly remain constant. Many of the significant developments of the past several decades were facilitated by individuals who were exemplary in their community engagement and ability to adapt to new environments. And I fundamentally believe that these competencies will be instrumental moving forward as we strive to tackle some of the most critical challenges that are facing us today. Yeah, well, I, I think so. And, and I think that, that, I mean, hopefully anybody who, who as an employer or, or, you know, or even, you know, for universities and colleges, you know, as, as young people coming through, you're, you're, yes, you're looking at those academic qualifications, but, but everybody does the same qualifications. But when you look at the look at the award, uh, and there you're looking at a real person, you're looking at a three dimensional character. You find out much more mm-hmm. about what they've done and and what they're capable mm-hmm. of, and and what their interests mm-hmm. and passions are, and and uh, and and you know, and, and I, that 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 I think is a is a really important measure in, in, in today's uh, and and hopefully something that you you can actually talk about. It's very difficult to talk about academic qualifications for very long. <laughs> <laughs> but you can talk about your award experiences for much longer. <laughs> I could not agree more. Um, many of the award experiences uh, lead to much more uh, interesting and um, invigorating stories than more traditional academic experiences. Um, along, keeping uh, in line with some of the ideas you just raised, I'm a personal proponent of the notion that one of the most important considerations to optimize for when you know, making a decision at a young age is the accumulation of knowledge and also the development of skills that are useful throughout life. Um, within this context, um, in your opinion, could you uh, share examples of some of the tangible skills that participants have developed over the course of the program? Well, yeah, I mean, there have been rather a lot of them who've gone through the program. Um, so I'm, I'm, that might have to be a slightly more general general answer to that one. Um, but I mean, for those that know a little bit about the award program, it it, it has a number of, of sections. Which so one develops skills, another one encourages you to get physically active, another one to give service, and then of course to to experience adventure. Um, so those are the four four key ones, um, and and slightly in a sort of rephrasing slightly what I said earlier on, but it allows young people to to set their own goals. Um, record their own progress um, and have their achievements consistently recognised worldwide, and that's quite interesting. Um, and it's that it's that recognition of those those uh, achievements, um, but it gives them this unique international accreditation of their experiences, um, uh, which is then in, in you know so much value by employers and and by universities. 
um, because as I was saying, it, you know, it's, it, it has that real relevance. I mean, in terms of those, those skills, I mean, confidence is, is absolutely up there, number one. Um, and also resilience. This, this teaches you that, that there are challenges along life. You know, life is full of challenges. It doesn't just end because you've done your award, um, but it gives you the skills about how to overcome that challenge. Um, and, um, and also life is full of opportunities. You know, doors open unexpectedly. You, you, you're trundling along in your particular career or, or where you want to go and suddenly this, this opportunity comes. But not everybody has the courage or the confidence to take that opportunity when it comes along. I think if you've done the award, you, you see that as an opportunity. You, you don't necessarily know where it's going to take you, but you're, you're prepared to walk through that door and see where it goes. Um, you, there's, a, there's, a, there's a different, hopefully a different um, uh, uh, quality about those confidence, about those young people who come through the, through the award. Um, and then it's all those other little life skills, you know, communication. I mean, you're particularly good at communicating and, and, uh, and that, that's fantastic. Um, but then it's the problem solving. It's the, you know, it's, it's the, it, and, and it's the leadership, you know, every now and then, you, especially when you're on the, um, out on that, that your adventurous journey, um, or, you know, when you're working with another group of, you know, you, you, you have to show that that ability to be able to lead to take control when 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 the situation arises um and i think if you've got those those that that confidence um you've got that communication skills you've got the problem solving you, you're capable of creating meaningful change in the life or the community around you and and that i think is really important um and there's another one there's this notion of being of your own self esteem that sense of satisfaction gives you a real sense of self, of your own uh, belief in yourself. Um, and that also has a huge resonance in your, within your, your community and within your society. Um, and, and, and so all, all of those, I think, are, are really important um, skills and experiences. And, while, and the other thing is, is that while all young people can benefit, we know that, that, that hopefully pretty much everybody who gets involved in the world gets some benefit out of it. But for some, we know that the transformative effect can be truly life-changing. And that's when we reach those who are most at risk um, or marginalised. Um, and those are the young people that, whose lives we can, I mean, really make a significant change to if, if we can reach them in the first place. And that, that's a really important aspect of, of the work we do. A lot of those skills that you mentioned are skills that are so important to um, building a young person's self-esteem and to positioning them to be able to tackle really um, important problems and important challenges as they move on through their through their life. I I couldn't agree more with the fact that the award really provides a framework that kind of fosters a certain confidence in pursuing ambitious projects um, at a very young age, and that that initial exposure to that to that comfort to that confidence uh, really can carry forward. Um, in life, as you as you grow and as you continue to develop, um, it, I certainly think it has in in, in my case. Um, I, I think back to um, my uh, my gold project. Um, I was involved with Engineers Without Borders during my first three years at Princeton. Um, and during my first two years, I worked as a member of the Peru team towards designing a gravity fed water distribution system for the 100 family community of Pusunchas, Peru, uh, a community that did not previously have access to a source of clean drinking water. Um, and during my first summer, um, after beginning studies at Princeton and having spent the, uh, the year developing plans for this system, I actually had the opportunity to travel in country uh, to begin constructing uh, the plans that we had been working on. And this was a very significant event uh, in my Princeton experience and in my life journey thus far. I think I really benefited from working with a team of students and a team of community partners from extremely diverse backgrounds working towards this common goal in an environment that was very unfamiliar to me. Um, I think personally, I'm a very strong believer in the notion of a T-shaped leader, T a T-shaped leader, um, a T-shaped leader being an individual who can mobilize a group of people to achieve a goal in large part driven by uh, this individual's depth of knowledge in a certain field, this being the long part of the T, but also a breadth of knowledge that allows that individual to very readily engage with people from other fields or with other skill sets. 
And I fundamentally believe that the award program places participants on a very promising tra trajectory to become uh, a T-shaped leader. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a I think that's a very fair point. Um, and uh, um, um, and you're, you're right. It's it's not just the ability to 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 be an expert in your own field. Um, it, it's being able to re respect other people's views and opinions, and that's what good leadership is all about. But that was a fantastic experience that you must have had out in out in Peru. I mean, that, that's that's uh, and uh, and came, I'm sure came back with that came back from that with with a, with a great sense of achievement having done that. <laughs> it was it was uh, truly incredible, and I had to brush up on my Spanish for for the trip, <laughs> not being a native speaker. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Very good, excellent. So better than mine, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately uh, lost lost a, a, a fair amount of it. Um, but still, still working on it in my spare time. Um, so moving on, one of the reasons, or the reason why we today find ourselves uh, conversing in this virtual format is in response to um, COVID-19 and the disruption that this pandemic has caused around the world. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has truly forced the global community to rethink how we structure our societies and uh, conduct ourselves in our day-to-day -day life. And many students around the world, uh, myself included, have been forced to rapidly adapt to a primarily virtual learning environment to complete academic studies. And within this new learning environment, what do you think? Uh, what role do you think experiential learning plays? Um, I'm I'm probably fairly biased in this, but I think it's more important than ever. Um, I mean, it goes back to that that. Uh, uh, that that very first decline in in uh, in, in fitness. Um, well, actually, fun enough, the decline was was that uh, that Han referred to was was really the the initiative and enterprise. His decline there, and that was due to what he identified as as what he called um, spectatoritis. So this is the the growing <laughs> indulgence in forms of amusement as as uh, as a passive spectator rather than an active participant. This is this is back in the in the back in the fifties. I mean. <laughs> But and now it's like that's exactly what we've all become. We've just become these these we're 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 just sitting passively and and uh, and so experiential learning I think is is even more important than than uh, than ever before. But the challenge is is actually encouraging people to feel the confidence to go and do it, um, to get out there, to realise that actually it's it's not quite perhaps as dangerous as as, as some people think, depending on what it is that you're doing. But um, and um, and and that comes back to this real value of of the award empowering young people to take those decisions and 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 it's brilliant the way young people have have adapted to that as well. Um, so they've adapted their awards according to the uh, to the environment. And they've changed what it was that they were doing so they could they could achieve it. Um, and I was talking to a group of of young people in the states who've been doing their awards and and. Uh, um, and and brilliant, you know. I mean, um, changing from from being able to do your your uh, physical from from one thing to to you know either becoming you know running or, or um, I wish I could remember actually exactly what it was that he described it, but um, but it, it sounded really quite challenging. Um, <laughs> and now he wants to go off and run half marathons in, on every continent. So he's got this bug by by uh, you know just because he had to change what he was doing for his his physical. Um, and um, you know somebody else who who, uh, who loved doing um, rock climbing, but and skiing, but you know very difficult to be able to go and do this while skiing, particularly difficult in the summer anyway. So um, um, so it's taken up running and and uh, um, but then it's also that the volunteering aspect. So so that 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 young people have have got out there to help in their communities. Um, and one young uh, girl I was talking to who's, who was um, uh, volunteering in her local hospital. Um, and was you know was was a fantastic source of help um, during mm -hmm. so yeah, and that's you know if if we can instill that sort of of, of um, ethos and value in amongst young people then then absolutely brilliant and all over the world young people have really turned out as as volunteers they've they've turned their skills into things that can you know that can be positive in the environment and making masks and PPE kit and and I mean. It's it's been really heartening, you know, uh, listening to that, and, and also so many 
alumnus or alumni of, of, of the award who are now, you know, ended up as, as frontline workers and, and, and key workers in this, in, in this, you know, so, and really stepping up. It's been very, very, very heartening and encouraging, I have to say. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, one, one point that you raised really, really resonated with me, this idea that um, experiential learning, this very important form of learning really requires two or requires two key um, things in order to uh, really achieve its its impact it requires certain confidence on the part of the learner but also initiative and we've spent some time talking about uh, this notion of, of 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 the importance of confidence but I think that initiative is also something that deserves a lot of attention uh, I think that the initiative that is inherent in many experiential learning opportunities is what really results in these opportunities in some sense, often contributing more to the development of a young person than a more traditional academic learning opportunity. Um, because I think that that initial initiative then triggers a reflection post the completion of the activity that really, um, really completes that learning process in a manner that uh, surpasses what we see with more traditional forms of learning. And I think that um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, as, as you've alluded to, yes, of course, makes many of these activities more difficult, but doesn't preclude the completion of them. And I think that provided that, of course, the necessary public health, uh, public health uh, guidelines are followed, that oftentimes it is possible to uh, to organize such activities in a way that still allows young people to benefit from this very rich experience. Yeah, yeah, and and, and we um, and we must keep on keep on fighting for for young people to enable them to be able to complete their awards. It's it's really important that they continue their journeys. Um, you know, too many too many young people have, have have had their lives put on hold or or disrupted by exams being cancelled or you know not being able to complete that rite of passage moving from one school to another or or from school to college mm -hmm. so uh, but you know the award is is so important in their lives it's it's it, that we we can't let we 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 must be able to to, to let them finish but anyway I'll, I'll let you carry on <laughs> yeah, the, the, the award can, <laughs> the the award can certainly be be a release in uh, in uh, a time when there are so many challenges uh, so I could not agree with you with you more. Um, I think in keeping with uh, the response of the Duke of Edinburgh Award Program to the COVID nineteen pandemic, um, you know there have no doubt been many uh, changes made to the program to adapt to this new uh, primarily virtual format. Do you think that these changes compromise or impede the program's ability to accomplish its mission? Um, what challenges exist in um, operating the program in this in this reality. Cool. Um, yes, but the award can adapt, and 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 we we can compromise. Um, of course, you can. I mean, you know, we're not we're not we're, we're not silly about this. As I said, it's important that young people get to to, to complete their journeys. And um, but it's it's less about it's actually less about what what the award can do it's actually what about the people what about our our participants and young people we know that they're still up for it we know they want to be able to to, to complete it so actually half the battle is 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 making sure that our our that the adult mentors um are there for them and that that you know that they have the confidence that they are enabling their young people you know their participants to be able to complete um and it, and it's really important that we we get parents on side and saying no, this is this is important. It's not. It, this isn't a question of a, of of a, of a sort of a nice to have add on. Actually, no, it's really important in this, in in your child's life that they they complete this 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 award. Um, and you know, we will look after them absolutely. Um, but it but but you 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 just got to let them have that that. And and that's that's a it's an it's an interesting sometimes frustrating challenge um and it's very different every everywhere in the world you've got all these different rules and and so it's 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 and the circumstances are all different and so it's 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 a fascinating time and and a slightly frustrating time but also an amazing time how the award around the world has come together much more than it's ever done before because we're all in this together and, and we're all trying to work out how best to, to to get through it which is which is really heartening um but I, but for me, it's it is absolutely critical that that, that that we must not and and cannot leave any young person behind. 
or to leave them to fend for themselves. That that's not what this is. You know, they they need us. That whole network, that award family. They they. I I think that there's something that's really important in their lives, and we've, we've got to be able to support them. Um, I think it's really important in terms of their well-being. It's really important in terms of their physical and mental health, um, and and in their fitness and their you know their because that's all about their resilience. If if, if they haven't got those things, it doesn't matter what happens later. They're going to be in a much poorer place, and we've got to we've, we've got to give young people the the you know they are very capable. If you give them the challenge, they will respond. Um, and and we've got to give them the tools to be able to to get through what is an increasingly uncertain and and very difficult place. So that's. That's why I think it's, you know, we are more important than ever, and I think we're 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 really important in terms of the solution and what comes out and what comes, happens next. I think it's really important. There's there's no question that the some of the changes that have been adopted in the face of the pandemic have, in some sense, changed the typical program experience. But in my opinion, they by no means impede the program's ability to accomplish its its fundamental mission. I do think that there are still a multitude of avenues that can be used to pursue experiential learning uh, opportunities and community engagement, um, either in person by following the appropriate public health guidelines or um, in a virtual format uh, as, as we are doing now. Um, and as, as we touched on earlier, I think that the, a key idea here is having the motivation to take the initial initiative to embark on uh, an experiential learning opportunity or embark on uh, embark on a non-traditional learning opportunity and really um, and really have that have that drive to explore something new and often benefit incredibly from doing so yeah and, and also having the having the confidence to listen to what young people want to do and respond to that just as just as you would always does because actually they're they're much they're in the they're in the place that they can take the decision better than 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 we can sitting thousands of miles away. So it's even more important that we listen to what it is that that young people want to do and 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 the adults around them uh, believe it's capable for them to do. And, and we have to respond to that. It's very important. I have been particularly heartened in recent months. Um, when I when I see many of my friends and many young people in the media being very vocal about about their views on the current struggles we were facing in the world and and what can be done to uh, to fight them, um, I, I I find that incredibly inspiring and incredibly heartening. Um, and one one of those issues, uh, switching gears a bit, that that is very much important and that is on the minds of uh, many young people and and all people and many people around the world, regardless of age. Um, is the persistence of systemic anti-Black racism in the United States and in societies around the world. Um, how, how do you think the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award contributes to the creation of a more equitable world, specifically in the context of anti-Black racism? Well, you, you, you're probably better placed to answer that than I am. Um, but I, <laughs> I think... I think it goes back to the the ethos and values of of the award that that that, that are at the heart of the whole um, award idea and concept and and um, and right from the word go it was quite clear it was open to all fourteen to twenty four year olds um, um, with no discrimination of any sort um, and that's been absolutely clear and it didn't and it didn't matter where the award started you know that was. Um, you know that was that was what it was all about, and and funny enough, somebody only heard this um, a couple of days ago, uh, but it really struck me that diversity is what we see, inclusion is what we feel. Um, uh, always difficult to know which word to use, and now I know which word to use, um, and that is that is absolutely the heart. And it, uh, funny enough, I go back to to um, so back in the in the mid eighties. Um, so this is so it's quite a long time ago. So the Duke of Edinburgh's Award started in South Africa. So this was this was absolutely smack in the middle of um, apartheid. Mm -hmm. um, and but it it started in a in a in 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 a small town that happens to be the sort of educational centre of, of South Africa in Grahamstown, um, and a, and a you know, relatively mixed communities, but. It was fascinating, and and 
<laughs> um, I mean, and it was it was quite radical because it went in there, but absolutely clear this was open to anybody and all. Um, but I, I had the opportunity to talk to uh, a chap who, who was one of the very first um, award participants in in Grahamstown. And as part of his service, he he went to go and help the ambulance service, the local ambulance service. And uh, they took him out on calls. Um, and he ended up, this is a young lad, he's at school, in high school. Um, and he, he ends up in in, um, in the townships um, where there are riots going on. And, and um, you know, he's he's out there helping to um, uh, to collect up the injured. And he comes out, his eyes are absolutely out on stalks. He had no concept. He grew up on a farm in in uh, um, in, in South Africa. He had no idea of of, of the of what was going on in his country. Um, and it was only through the award that he 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 actually experienced the reality of what was going on and and what um, apartheid really meant. Um, and I just find that it, it's just fascinating that there were people out there who who who, who wanted to bring this award with with with, I mean ideas that were you know very much against what the, the state wanted and I, I just find that really encouraging um and um and I, and I think that that's what the award does that it 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 in, it in, imbues that sense of, of of respect um because you're doing all these activities with and and you 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 this respect for other people it comes from that leadership skills you're talking about it um you learn about compassion. You learn about others that are considerably less fortunate than yourselves, and and you know that you can help. And that is another fascinating aspect, which which is a, a different story. You learn about tolerance, um, and and that. But at the same time, you learn about that self esteem. So you are comfortable in yourself, and I and all of those. I think all those values are really important um, to to in terms of hopefully overcoming a lot of those issues that, that you know, um, that, that you've been experiencing. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's the, the, the ward, you know, it's, it's in 130 countries and territories. I mean, way beyond the English-speaking world. We're in all sorts of different communities. Why? Mm -hmm. Because, and, you know, this goes back to the original idea. It, it is for any young person and anybody can do it. And it res and it, it responds to what it is that young people want to do. There's, I, I, it's fascinating. But having said that, we've got to remain vigilant. We have to, we have to make sure that, you know, that, that, that we at all times um, remain accessible and, and that we, we reach out to all communities and all groups, make sure there's absolutely no barriers there. Um, and we have to make sure that our, our staff and volunteers are absolutely follow the same standards and, and, and values and, and, and ethos. But, you know, it's, it's I, I have to say that, it, you know, I, all, well, and as I said, you know, my, my perhaps my view is a bit different, maybe others have, have, have different views, but I think that, I think what the award does is, I think it's really, really important in terms of, of uh, developing the, the you know, that decency in human people, in humankind that you talked about earlier on at the beginning. I think it's really important. It is a certainly a very a very complex a complex issue, and I think that that story that you shared uh, really struck a chord. In that, I do believe that the award truly helps instill a certain openness and commitment to interacting with and genuinely listening to other members in one's community, particularly those in needs, those in need, and um, you know, very often individuals that one might not otherwise have a chance to interact with. Um, the the history of systemic racism is an important reality that unfortunately many young people are never exposed to or exposed to in a very limited capacity um, in the traditional education system. And it's often only in speaking to and interacting with individuals who have lived through the consequences of the systemic racism that allies and members of society can work towards a more complete understanding of this perverse phenomenon or be pointed to quality resources for further learning. Um, and although merely increasing awareness and understanding of systemic racism is by no means sufficient to create an equitable society, it is a critically important first step and one that I do believe the award uh, facilitates very well. Well, I appreciate that. So thank you, because it's, you know, it's important that, that that's, 
that's what you feel. I I I can only express what what I see, and 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 but it's I'm I'm delighted that, that that's the way that you feel as well, which is tremendous. <laughs> and a bit of a relief. <laughs> we all hope for a better world, and, and we all hope for ways that we can make it a better world. You know, so um, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it's it's not it, it's not the same by any stretch of the imagination. But 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 the work the award has been doing in in Northern Ireland, in terms of working with young people, in breaking down the barriers, uh, bringing young people together uh, from different communities, it's it's. <laughs> It's it's different, but you know, strangely, it's the same. It's building that that trust, that respect, that tolerance, that realization that, mm-hmm. hey, you know, you can come from one community and you can still share exactly the same passions as somebody from another community, and 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 oh, right, okay, they're not so bad. Um, but uh, boy, you know, try, trying to trying to to work around you know the bigotry that goes on, and 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 you know, it's it's. As I said, it's challenging, but then it's so rewarding when you when you sit actually working for real and and uh, um, and, and and just again, it's really heartening. You just think you know, a bit more of this, a bit more of this, and, and and you know we can can make a difference long term. There will be a different generation coming through, with a different view, and 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 a group of young people who have the skills uh, and the confidence to be able to make that change, which is goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Step by step, I think we can certainly tackle this this important challenge. Um, uh, another critically important challenge that's facing our world, facing my generation, is is climate change. Um, one of the arguably the most important challenge facing us right now. Um, what role can the award play in positioning members of my generation to tackle this immense challenge? In your opinion, I, I, it comes back. To, it comes back to to what we're talking about about the, the, the empowering of young people. It's about giving them the the, the skills and the, the wherewithal to be able to to tackle the things that they and make make a, a meaningful change to the community and societies around them because they 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 believe it and they are capable of doing it. Um, that that I think is is that I think is 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 so important and and it's that ability to be. To be proactive, um, uh, to take responsibility, um, and, and to inspire each other. I, uh, talking to the group earlier on today, and, and a, just a group of young people, and, and you know, they're talking about how much technology is is a, is a way of communication, um, but actually how in, interestingly ha, ha, how they see it as a way of being able to inspire each other because they don't get necessarily get the inspiration from other bits of society and and and. Um, and and other mediums who who don't who who don't tend to to approach it in quite the same way and and I think I thought that was a I thought it was a really interesting statement and and um, but it's one thing to inspire each other it's 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 then the ability to be able to take action and make change and and, and mm-hmm. if if we can find a way of being able to develop those skills and those leadership skills then then fantastic um, so and. You know, hopefully, people like you can go out there and, and certainly with your 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 skills with engineering and with water. Gosh, you know, there's a there's a really challenging <laughs> one. You know, that then and, then and 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 bit by bit, we you know we can make a difference. Um, but um, and it's a generation that 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 is very exercised about this about this particular issue. Um, and, um, and 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 fantastic. I mean, you know, keep up keep up the pressure because we, you know we need we need it. <laughs> I I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I think that tackling a problem so complex, uh, significant, and challenging as climate change will you know, require very innovative solutions and solutions that are inherently cross disciplinary in nature. And I think that um, you know I reflect back on my experience working on the project in Peru, and that it was a very interdisciplinary. Uh, Initiative one that required buy-in from local politicians, uh, international NGOs, engineering professionals, and college students. And I do think that that type of cross collaboration is going to be critical to um, making you know, some progress towards addressing climate change. We have a few minutes for questions. Um, you know, I feel like we we have talked about or you have talked about so much and we've appreciated it so much and it's been so uh, enlightening. But uh, we do have a few questions uh, that came in from our viewing audience, which is um, amazing. I, if I can, even though we've been talking about some very, very heavy 
subjects. And I would actually love to spend a lot more time talking about those. <laughs> um, but I did get a question that I really loved. Um, can you share any of the most memorable anecdotes about the award and its recipients in your time working with it, Sarah? Hmm. Well, aside from meeting Nicholas here, who, who uh, is, I have to say, uh, which is a, a, a brilliant story and, and, and a fantastic sure. one. Um, You're too kind. But, um, <laughs> I um gosh um yes I mean there are there are where do we where do you start I the, there's probably one that sticks in my mind I suppose um and um um which is a um a young man called uh, um called Vicky Roy um and um uh, he ran away from home aged what 11 I think it was and ended up with a pack of uh, street children in in Delhi in in India um, lived in the railway station, um, and um, and he, yeah, led a pretty pretty rough life there. Um, subjected to to abuse and 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 a meal by collecting discarded plastic bottles. I mean, it was you know the the lowest of the low. Um, but he was he was picked up by um, a, a trust called the Salam Balak Trust, um, and um, uh, they encouraged him to do his DV. Mm -hmm. his award uh, he studied photography as a skill um actually discovered that he had a, a natural talent for, for photography which was uh, which was and that's that, that of all the possibilities that the award provided i mean that that's that's what he did um and um um and he but he also got involved in other activities he it, it, it opened his eyes to the world beyond the streets um and he actually started working with the Blind Boys Academy. And he, he took them on an expedition. So he was the eyes for these groups of, of blind boys to do their expedition. They were they were doing the same thing. Um, and I mean, you know, he credits the award that you know he said he'd still be washing dishes today if it wasn't for for, for the award. Now, what the, the bit is the, the next bit is so now go wind the clock forward to to New York in oh God. I wish I could remember when it was um, somewhere in the in the I think in the 1990s, well, late 1990s, it was, early 2000s. And I was attending an event at in, in New York, um, and there was this young man taking photographs of the, the, the reception that was on there. And he was wearing his gold pin. I've just run as I haven't got my gold pin on. Um, and um, so I stopped and asked him. I said, so you, you've, got, you've done your award? He said, yeah. Where did you do that? He said, oh, I did it through the Salam Balak Trust. Now, as it happens, we run a, um, a special projects fund, which funds various um, organizations and, and active community groups around the world in order to be able to improve the access and reach. And this was a project that we started some years ago to, to help one of these, the Salam Al Trust, to, to move young people off the streets. I mean, not just take them in the streets, but then give them the skills to be able to go on and do something else. So I looked at him and went, really? <laughs> I said, Thinking, well, then you must have been a street kid. So, what are you doing here? He said, "Well, I'm taking photographs. I'm I'm working for National Geographic now." I'm, and uh, I, and you just think, what an extraordinary story! And uh, he was selected as one of seven photographers for the um, for the uh, National Geographic's mission cover shoot to mark their 125th anniversary a few years later. I mean, just a how do you think, crikey, you know, oh. You know, the old shivers up the spine on that one. It's it's just really nice when when uh, you you see a story like that and and you you've helped change somebody's life to such an extent. Sorry, that was a very long answer, but there you go. <laughs> no, 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 that's great. It it actually it makes me want to follow up with another quick one. You talked about anti-black racism, which I really appreciate because I think this is a topic that um, a lot of folks are waking up to worldwide, and it is a very very difficult subject um, and. I really applaud the award for being open to taking it on um, and to really supporting young people in their work on that topic. Um, for you, as, as a young Black man, as a first Black valedictorian in Princeton University's 274-year history, um, what advice would you give to young people of color and young Black folks in these times? Um, yeah, what would you tell them and how are you managing and coping with a lot of what's going on right now. <laughs> Tough question. <laughs> I think that I think that a lot of a lot of the things that I often see um, in the news or that I 
observe going around around in the world can be often very disheartening. Mm -hmm. And I am very sympathetic to the impact that it can have on uh, people of color, young people of color, both men and women. Um, And my advice would be to take the time that you need to process what you're, what you're seeing, what you're observing, Um, spend the time uh, talking with your loved ones, your close ones, Mm -hmm. and don't let, don't let what you see, what you observe, what is happening, paralyze you. I think that one thing that I was really um, influenced by from a very young age was, um, you know, values imparted upon me by my parents, by my older sister, and by many of the role models in my life who always encouraged me to have the confidence to identify a passion, pursue it to the greatest of my ability, and to never let myself be um, intimidated or dissuaded by rooms I try to enter that are dominated by people who don't look like me. And I think that I very much taken that to heart and I would really encourage um, all people of color, particularly young people of color, young black individuals uh, to really uh, believe in that profoundly and to really go out, identify your passion and really try to be the best that you can be at at what you're interested in. Mm, Wonderful. And where do you see yourself in five years? And do do you see yourself staying involved with the award as you move into your career and, and beyond? I'm um, it's five years from now. <laughs> this, is, I, <laughs> this is uh certainly questions that I've been thinking of um uh, in, in, in recent days. I think five years from now I envision myself um having recently completed my academic studies and um, pursuing a entrepreneurial venture likely focused in the healthcare space. Um, With respect to my engagement with the award going forward, I expect to always be an advocate for the Duke of Edinburgh program. Uh, Like I mentioned earlier, it has truly been uh, an incredible influence in shaping who I am today. Uh, And I would really like to encourage um, all young people um, to engage with the award and to have the confidence to to embark on, on on a similar trajectory. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we look forward to your future involvement. Good luck in all your future endeavors. I know that you will continue to make history and change the world. Um, sir, any, any closing thoughts you have before we, before we have to adjourn for the day? Um, no, just to thank everybody for, for, um, for, for listening to, to us ch- wittering on here. And, and um, <laughs> I hope some of it made sense. And uh, I hope that you feel that, that, that what we're doing is, is, what we're doing for young people is is the right thing, um, and that you know that that um, that the award is is an, a non formal education is is just as important as formal education, but that it just develops young people in in a slightly different, more resilient way, um, and um, and for some people it, it can be that that life changer. It can be the one that that sets out what it is that they want to do um, in their careers, um, and uh, and find their find their real passion in life through through doing the DV. Um, but if they hadn't had that opportunity, who knows? If they hadn't had the the that introduction to the the endless possibilities that the award offers, what would have happened? Would they have discovered that that infinite potential in, in amongst themselves? And and would they have become world ready? Would they have become ready for whatever the world faces, whatever the new normal is, will they be ready for it? I, that's that's what we're here to do and that's what I hope we can do for many many more young people in the future thank you thank you with that I'll just say really quickly um thank you so much for watching thank you for joining us thank you again to Nicholas Johnson and to HRH the Earl of Wessex for his time today it's been wonderful Please, please go to usaward.org to learn more about the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award in the USA. Um, It is also in 130 countries, um, and you can connect to each of them through usaward.org. Learn more about us. Thank you again for your time. And uh, please encourage your young people and as adults, you can participate as award leaders. There's a place for everyone in the award, and there's certainly a place for the award in the world today. Thank you so much and have a great day.